In this third and final part of how to become a trader or investor, we will discuss live trading and what is required for that. The main reason why beginner traders and investors fail is because they are too keen on making money too quickly. They take positions that are too large or too volatile. They might have a broker who does not have their interest at heart or who uses borrowed money to provide what is known as leverage. We will try and make you aware of many of these issues in this final part of the course. We will also show you best practice regarding coming up with a trading plan and also how to keep what is known as a trading diary. Again, if you don't try to develop a what is called strong trading process before you invest, you are not likely to learn from your mistakes and will probably make them again and again. We will also spend some time discussing trading psychology. No matter how good you are at trading on paper, trading in practice is a lot harder and the market will find all your weaknesses and exploit them. Experienced traders often say that controlling your mind is key to trading success, and I agree. Live question and answer sessions are available at lexmanm.com for those of you who have questions about the content of this course. Let's get started. Being mentally tough means that you can bounce back from disappointments and have the ability to start over and over again. This is very much based on being able to control your emotions and focus on the goal and not allowing negative energy to impact your behavior. Of the other skills, only analytical ability and affinity with numbers are not necessarily based on psychology. So, six out of the eight skills good traders possess do have their basis in psychology. So you might well have found a currency trading idea that looks brilliant from both a fundamental as well as a technical perspective and are keen to put the trade on as soon as possible. But you should still not do that. And that is because before you put on a new trade, you need to look at your own mental state and consider the psychology of the wider market as well. The goal of this course is to help you make money through a disciplined and logical approach. But to do that, it means that you have to master the psychological aspect of trading as well. That means looking inside yourself and understanding who you are and how you react to certain situations and then addressing any potential problem so that you can reach your full potential. But you also need to appreciate that there are other traders in the market as well. There are human beings behind each graph and statistic. And if you are serious about making money, you need to try and understand the other players as well. Let's start by focusing on you. When you trade, you will be continuously confronted with your own personality. Certain aspects of your character can be your best trading tools, but others can cause you failure. The more you know about your strengths and weaknesses, the easier it is to address them. Your strengths and how to develop them are not my main concern right now. I want to focus mainly on potential weaknesses, because in trading, every weakness can cost you money and potentially take you out of the game. The first potential personality flaw is being overconfident. Of course, it's good to believe in your own skills and think that if other people can make money, then you should be able to do so as well. However, the more self-confident you are, the greater the risk of underestimating the difficulty of making money in the market. People suffering from overconfidence are often book smart or self-made. They have shown themselves to be intelligent in one area and think they can do the same when trading FX. However, the truth is often different. Overconfidence leads to holding on to losing positions for too long because the situation has become a question of ego as opposed to a mechanical process of getting rid of a bad position and starting again. It might also lead to taking positions that are too large in size in the first place. The second personality flaw when it comes to trading is a lack of discipline. In trading, discipline is key. You need to do your homework before you trade and you need to stick to your plan. When that discipline is missing, your trades might be too spontaneous and not very well thought through, which will lead to losses. Alternatively, your trades might indeed have been thought through properly, but if you don't keep to the plan, losses might again be the result. The third flaw relating to personality is a lack of patience. Once again, if you don't have a lot of patience, you may only achieve suboptimal trading results. Perhaps you have been a good citizen and have done all your research and are waiting for a good entry point to put on a trade. But your patience has run out 
and you end up doing the trade prematurely. This will lead to a worse price than if you had waited, or lead you to being in a trade that would never have ended up being triggered in the first place. You will probably make your broker very happy, because you will pay a lot of commission, but you won't last very long in the world of trading. The fourth issue occurs if you are someone who is easily bored. It is part of the life of all traders to spend long periods of time behind the screen watching the market without much really happening. At some point it is very easy to do a trade out of boredom. However, this boredom will lead to badly thought out trades and a waste of time and energy and ultimately a waste of money. If it is in your character to be easily bored, then you should protect yourself by doing more background research and reading more books about the markets. This is likely to be a much better investment of your time than putting on random trades out of boredom. I could go on forever about personality traits that might stop you from being successful in trading. The main thing to realize here is that you need to analyze your own character and protect yourself from yourself. Nobody else will do it for you. As Lex explained, there are numerous psychological challenges that you will encounter when you're trading or investing in the markets. Money has a very powerful effect on decision making, especially when it's your own that you're risking. What is quite amazing is that of the eight skills possessed by successful traders, only analytical and numerical ability are unrelated to psychology. What this means is that psychology makes up to 75% of effective trading. So until you develop an understanding of yourself and how to manage your own psychological state, it's very easy to get caught in the moment when trading, which inevitably leads to mistakes. Discipline is one of the most vital psychological traits that you need to develop as a trader. The following slide explains why this is so important. Discipline is essential if you are to succeed in the markets. Without it, you may find it difficult to stick to your trading plan or to resist the urges brought about by overconfidence and boredom. Discipline will also ensure that you are prepared for the day ahead before you begin trading and maintain a record of your trades in a journal. We cover each of these in detail later in the course. The final area of your trading that requires discipline is risk management. To ensure that you only risk what you can afford to lose and don't overexpose your portfolio to one single theme. Let's look in more detail at what we mean by risk management. The goal of risk management is to ensure that you never lose so much that you have to stop trading. The aim of the game is to always be around to trade another day and capitalize on future opportunities. If you are out of money, then you are out of the game and you will have to let future opportunities pass you by. This is what professional investors focus on when it comes to managing risk. The first aspect concerns stop losses, which are designed to help you exit a losing trade if it goes too far against you. Lex will explain how these work with an example in a moment. The second element of risk management is known as position sizing, which relates to the amount of money that you should risk on any given trade. Finally, there are exposure limits to ensure that you aren't overly reliant on any one idea for your portfolio to be profitable. This helps you to diversify your risk across a number of different investments. These can seem like complicated concepts when you're starting out, but for us at the Academy, it's really important that you stop and take heed of them. We want you to remain in the game for the long run. Again, we have courses at a beginner level, but are also able to guide you all the way up to becoming a professional risk manager, if you so wish. It is super critical that every time you consider making a trade, you decide what the maximum amount of money is that you are prepared to lose on a given trade. If you don't do that, you are either very rich or very dumb. Based on this predefined maximum loss amount, you then need to leave a so-called limit order with your broker to get you out of the trade when this loss has in fact materialized. That is exactly what the protective stop loss order is all about. It allows you to automatically exit a position if your position moves too far against you, beyond a predefined level. You can also possibly put in a take profit limit order. This works in the same way, but is there for you to exit a position when your trade has made a certain amount of money. Take profit orders can be helpful. Stop loss orders are essential. Ideally, 
This type of stop loss limit order is set around a certain price level on the chart and could even be adapted to take account of the specific volatility of the asset you trade. We go through this all in more detail in our advanced courses. Feel free to move your stop loss levels. However, only ever move it to diminish your risk, i.e. by placing your possible exit closer to the current market price and never further away, which would expose you to larger losses. It may seem like common sense, but you will be amazed how often inexperienced traders and professionals alike enter a position without having a clearly defined exit strategy. They are prone to setting an initial stop loss level and then moving it further away as the trade begins to go against them. The whole idea is to have a line in the sand where you admit that you were wrong and get out of a losing position before it becomes an even bigger problem that could potentially end your trading career. This is why ego has no place in trading. Have a look at the following slide. So here's an example of when a stop loss can literally save your account. Let's assume that you own this particular stock, which happens to be a chicken farm in China. With the Chinese eating more and more chicken, it seemed a good investment at the time. However, this company later turned out to be a fraud. So where would you have got out had you not have set a stop loss? 